Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Silence, please. Se reanuda la sesión. We will resume our session. There's just one point before we resume with the voting. The very efficient secretariat has informed me that the, there was a mistake in the drafting of the voting list. It was in, it's something that's very simple by the way, but it's in Compromise 32, Part 8. There was an oral amendment and there was an objection to the oral amendment and I put that to the vote even though it should have been included in part 7 so part 8 shouldn't have been put to the vote so we're going to deem it to have not been voted upon that's part 8 of compromise 32 it's a minor issue it's not particularly important so can we put is everybody here can we put this to the vote okay so in that case we will put the draft legislative resolution as a whole as amended to the vote the voting is open bueno, no cerramos. Comienza. Ah, the voting is open. We haven't yet closed the vote. The voting is open. Okay. 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 Yes. So, if everybody has voted, there's one socialist too many. It seems. Volvemos atrás. Volvemos atrás. Let's go back. Let's start again. I think there's one socialist too many. Uh, can we start the vote now? Vamos, un momento. Just one moment, sorry. Vamos a repetir la... Let's repeat the vote. Let's do it again. No. Pongan todas las tarjetas. En... If everybody could put their voting cards in. Has everybody got their voting cards? Is everybody prepared for the vote? I was just checking. Okay, the vote is open. Has everybody voted? The voting is closed. So, 15 votes in favour, 9 against. That means that the resolution is adopted. Let's move on to Budget 1, the Draft Legislative Resolution Budget 1. The voting is open. Closed. That's carried. Budget two. The voting's open. The voting's closed. Pepe tiene uno de más. The EPP has one too many. That's approved. Reggie one. The vote is open. Termina. Voting's closed. That's rejected. Rejected. So finally, we will put the whole of the draft legislative resolution to the vote. If everybody's voted, The voting's closed. 14 in favour, 10 against, 2 abstentions. The report, the draft resol re legislative resolution is approved. Perdón, perdón, perdón. Vamos a repetir la... Let's just repeat the vote because, as you can see, 14, 10 plus 1 doesn't make 26 so there was one GUE member too many and we voted a thousand times today let's get the last one right at least so in this case it was uh, one too many GUE members let's 
Open the vote. Cierra. Voting's closed. Okay, 13 in favor, 10 against, and two abstentions. That is approved. So, uh, silence please, just for a second. We're going to uh, give the floor to the rapporteur in just a moment. I'd just like to say to all of you, thank you very much for the vote, and thank you to everybody who has worked on making this vote possible, on the compromise amendments, on all of the tabling, the drafting. Thank you to the Secretariat and everybody up here at the Speaker's table. Without them, it would not have been possible to get this uh, epic vote through. Thank you. Y le recuerdo que la comisión and uh, the commission uh, now has to do its bit. Gracias. Pasamos. Por favor. Ladies and gentlemen. Por favor. Please. Por favor, la comisión. Please, the uh, committee has to continue now. Mr. Kadek, Milana. Mr. Kadek, Mr. Milano, we've got to continue. Bueno, seguimos con el siguiente punto. Okay, so let's move on with the next item on today's agenda. Item 9, fishing strategies in the Adriatic and Ionian Seas. The rapporteur was Mr. Milana. Please, uh, some, uh, a moment of silence, please. So we're going to have a first exchange of views with a brief uh, presentation from on the uh, Commission's strategy adopted on the 10th of December. I'll hand the floor first, though, to Mr Milano. I'm sure everyone will be very keen to hear precisely what I'm about to say now, so I'll try to be very brief. This is our first chance to really discuss the issue and to look at the, this um, draft report. We will obviously have other chances to discuss the issue at a later date. So exactly what is it? We're, we're trying to be a part... Si tratta di inserirsi. What we're attempting to do is to be a part of a process. The process that the European Union has uh, defined at various levels and in the various bodies of the Union. It would be a strategy for the Adriatic and Ionian Seas, for the entire macro region of the Adriatic and the Ionian. Obviously, uh, fishing in that area is e extremely specific. There are two major problems, really, that the fisheries have faced there. The first is that there is a, a co-living or living together of uh, member states, non-member states, and accession, or a an accession state. The second is that this sea is a sea that has very uh, shallow bottoms and has geomorphological conditions that are very different from the rest of the Mediterranean. And nonetheless, the same rules apply to that sea as do to other parts of the Mediterranean. So the effort of the work should really concentrate on trying to find a strategy that can be put into place, a strategy that would lead to a certain extent at least to um, this region finding a role as a pilot region to see if it is possible to build 
policies based on several years that, that, that spread across several years of times and that aim to conserve resources and protect fisheries so that is not a an area of crisis because indeed the conditions of fisheries are are quite difficult there so in order to do this we're going to be carrying out work over the number next couple of months the next couple of weeks and we'll try to come up with solutions that we can then dis discuss whether or not we're going to to have an effect on regulations that that apply to that region and then we'll see how we can be a part of the IMP in general. We'll also see how we can have an effect on what the European Union is doing precisely in the macro region, the Adriatic. So I asked to draft this report because the crisis that is facing the, the fish, uh, fisheries in the Mediterranean are, are being uh, complicated by the specific conditions that apply to that region. They are facing harder problems than in other areas. And so, if there is an overarching policy that applies to this region that doesn't take into place the specificities that could really compound the problems and make the situation much worse for those who live there. There is a lot of small scale fishing going on in this area but there's also large scale fishing and so we need to try to find exactly what areas we can focus on, what we can ask the Commission to really look at. We need to really weigh all of the various issues. And now this is something that we have to consider, uh, but within the context of the, f the full Mediterranean region. There are eight countries, uh, member states, that have borders on the Mediterranean, and there are 14 non-member states that are Mediterranean bordering countries. So any type of policy that is put into place in Europe that affects the Mediterranean obviously is going to come into contact with these other non-member states. So this is a very specific part of the, the Mediterranean. And then within the Mediterranean we have the Adriatic and it's a good place for experimenting with new relations the Black Sea is another area where this could be said, uh, where we really have to look at the relationship between member states and non-member states in, in, in one small sea basin where rules can be put into place through international agreements. I think once I said we could call these uh, fishing agreements without the fish, where we can try to really manage the resources of uh, countries that, that are not member states, but where we can at least have an effect on the way that the, the resources are managed, because that has an effect on Europe, and hopefully we can find a good and virtuous relationship between the European Union and these non-member states. Another element something a little bit more concrete here, is that this sea is a good one for carrying out experiments in maritime spatial planning. Now this has been referred to in recent documents, both in Parliament and in the Commission, under IMP. And maritime spatial planning is something that is going to be increasingly important. Now, this means that we'll perhaps do what we've discussed in this committee on a number of occasions. We could perhaps use the seas in the best way possible, finally do that. We could look at where in the seas the best place to fish, where are, which areas are ones where we shouldn't be fishing, where we can carry out aquaculture, 
where we can use best use our transportation systems, how we can coordinate relationship the relations between the various uh, platforms that are in place for energy production, for example. So I think the the major challenge that we face here is trying to find the best way to link up all of these different elements so that the Commission can very uh, swiftly come up with a proposal. It's obviously the Commission that is going to have to come up with that proposal after all. And then the, the Parliament will have a chance to look at that, at that in detail and, and make an assessment. But one last thing as, as pertains to aquaculture. The Commission's reform proposal includes big changes here. And if we do not find the best way to make these activities sustainable and feasible in aquaculture, well, then those, those cultures will perhaps be, be lost fully or will be developed in non-member states. So we need to build all of the conditions possible to make sure that the that European rules in place and those rules in the non-member states work together with maritime spatial planning that that then that, that, that all of this leads to investment in that specific area in europe we produce 1.25 million tons of fish from aquaculture and we actually consume 5 million uh, tons of that that fish so meaning that we are importing So that means that, the, that this can, le can lead to a number of problems that we've discussed in this committee on other occasions. So today I just wanted to open the floor to try to have an exchange of, of views on this. And I'm interested to hear what the Commission has to say, but I'm hoping that other, others will bring in very interesting elements that can assist me in my work. And we can do this via uh, direct uh, meetings. And all of us share, obviously, the goal of uh, trying to come up with the best possible report on, on, on this issue. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you very much. I'll hand the floor now to the Commission and then to the members who wish to take the floor. Commission? ¿Quién va a intervenir? Nadie. Nobody wants to take the floor from the Commission? Well, pues sorprendentemente. Oh, that's surprising. Okay. Ah. Adelante, perdón. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I didn't quite understood you. Thank you very much. Um, on the 3rd of December, the Commission uh, published its proposal for strategy for the Adriatic Ionian uh, area. It is based on extensive discussions among the Adriatic and Ionian authorities and, of course, on the input of uh, stakeholders that we received during three workshops that we organized uh, in 2012, in Athens, Trieste, and Porto Rose in Slovenia. This uh, communication is just the beginning. We will then move to uh, the content of an action plan and to the definition of priorities next year. And as you know, an action plan is a rolling document subject to constant updating. Last week, the European Council gave the Commission a mandate to develop a macro-regional strategy for the Adriatic and Ionian Seas. The communication clearly states that should the EU Member State decide to ask the Commission to prepare an EU strategy uh, for the Adriatic and Ionian region, this maritime strategy will constitute its first component. The strategy has identified four pillars. The blue growth, a healthier marine environment, safer and more secure seas, and sustainable and responsible fisheries. These pillars will have to translate into concrete priority areas with related actions and flagship projects which can then apply for funding under the EU 
new common strategic framework for regional and structural support, or under the new research program Horizon 2020, to name just a few of the financing possibilities. Other potential of sources of funding could in come into play as well, such as the international financial institutions, including the Western Balkan Investment Framework or private investors even. Now that we have chosen together the main areas for cooperation, ideas for concrete projects and start, are starting to come up. We will distill these priorities from these proposals and choose the flagship projects. So it is important that we decide on a clear focus without trying to tackle everything at once. And I will come to some of the points that uh, Mr. Milana has just developed. Within the blue growth pillar, aquaculture has been identified as one of the sectors with bigger potential in the Adriatic and Ionian region. Aquaculture has been the fastest growing food production sector in the world over the last two decades. But contrary to global trends, the EU production has been stagnating. This sector faces environmental and spatial constraints, and these are common to all Adriatic and Ionian countries. We need to circulate information on planning and sustainability, and we need to, lead to let aquaculture develop offshore or in remote areas where there is less competition for space and less environmental impact. We should do more on research too. So here we meet your concern with the maritime, with the, uh, maritime spatial planning. The shortcomings of our fisheries system are well known, as are the solutions that we are proposing with the reform. Increasing the added value of fish products, in particular for small-scale fisheries, in cooperation with producers, stakeholders and local action groups improving market intelligence, and fostering the collaboration between scientific bodies and fishing enterprises. Actions that could be developed within this strategy could be marketing strategies that distinguish local aquaculture products from foreign ones, organize regional fairs for aquaculture products, and promote less known species, local species, or new products. I count at least three reasons why the Adriatic and Ionian seas can benefit from a maritime strategy. Such a strategy would enable us to pinpoint the opportunities for growth and jobs that are specific to these two seas. On 8 October, in Cyprus, member states adopted a marine and maritime agenda to uphold the Europe 2020 strategy for growth, the Limassol Declaration. It urges countries to make the established sector stronger, like tourism and transport, for instance. At the same time, the less explored sectors might open up to new growth avenues, for instance, new technologies to harvest mineral deposits or renewable energy or of innovative aquaculture techniques. The second reason would be that in regional cooperation, the specific needs of coastal population will come to the central stage. Sea basin strategies are very useful tools to implement subsidiarity because they enable us to gear EU action towards the real needs of coastal population. A maritime strategy gets the highest value for EU money. The macro regional approach ensures better connection between sectors and activities, provided that all programs are aligned and that the same goals are embedded in all our policies across sectors and across borders. Regarding more specifically fisheries, the communication on the Adriatic Union initiatives sets the following priorities. Achieving sustainable management of fisheries including the development of multi-annual plans and measures such as marine protected areas in their wider sense. Contribute to fisheries profitability and sustainability by strengthening stakeholders' involvement in fisheries management and other actions for sustainable fisheries and uncontaminated fish. 
improve the culture of compliance, save resources and facilitate transfer of information, enhance cooperation for the control of fishing activities, and finally develop scientific cooperation on fisheries with a view to better respond to the needs of the fisheries and aquaculture sector. So there is no doubt that building a macro-regional strategy from scratch is a very demanding task. And we very much appreciate the role that the European Parliament could play in this respect, as it is the case for the Atlantic. And we are looking forward with, to see uh, for every proposal you may uh, take and support further stakeholders' involvement in this process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, the uh, members who wish to speak, uh, first speaker, go ahead. Thank you very much. Well, of course, I'm very familiar with you with other discussions on maritime policy. I haven't been in this committee very long, but I have addressed these matters before. I was rapporteur in the Transport Committee. So this has very much to do with integrated maritime policy. Of course, this is a fish committee, but of course this is an important component of integrated maritime policy. So I think we have to really look at this in terms of how we can develop this in a sustainable way for the future. So I think it's a necessity of balancing different components. I think this has a significant uh, economic potential in an area which currently is having economic difficulties. So I think th in this area, and as well as all areas mentioned by the rapporteur already, in other words, we're talking about maritime transport, we're talking about coastal tourism, and also with fisheries, which is suffering at the time. So I think we have agreed already that it's important when there's an interface that the situation isn't very easy for the stakeholders, but it's important to see a sustainable recovery in this area. And we have to take into account to ensure that we only fish the fish that are actually available so that there are fish available for the future. So of course, in this uh, area in the Mediterranean, uh, it's not entirely clear what uh, the borders of responsibility actually are. And I think the rapporteur has made it clear that we have to look very closely and say who uh, is responsible for different policies uh, concerning aquaculture and fisheries. And as the Commission already said, I think we have to uh, use this where you're not already busy with other forms of economic activity, for example, offshore, how you can have offshore installations which can be used in an optimal fashion f to promote economic productivity and at the same time ensuring sustainable fisheries. So aquaculture is part of blue growth and I think it's important for us um, to say that it's not it's something we have to take and keep in mind that globally aquaculture provides 50% of fish in Europe it's only 25%. So I mean of course I could continue because I find these topics very interesting but I'm very interested in looking forward to future work and of course I will write something but I won't do it before Christmas. You'll get it next year. So I think it's a very important topic that we're addressing. So I look forward to working with the rapporteur. Gracias. Thank you very much, Ms. Regner. Uh, Ms. Frager. Well, this is a very straightforward matter. What we're talking about is a, a maritime strategy for the Adriatic and Ionian Sea. But at the end of the day, I don't know whether or not this is going to be the title of the report, but you talk about fishing strategy, not maritime strategy. So really the scope is actually somewhat vague. Uh, are we dealing with just maritime strategy or is it uh, something that focuses just on fishing as the title would suggest? Uh, because marit maritime strategy is something rather larger. The Commission has a commi communication on this which I have in front of me but in the title of this item on the agenda it talks specifically about fishery, fisheries. 
So I'd like to know exactly uh, what the scope of the report is going to be, so that I know whether or not uh, I'll be interested. Gracias, Thank you, Ms. Fraga. Well, uh, perhaps the rapporteur should answer that one straight away. Mr. Malana. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to answer just this comment, or should I give my answers to all of the comments? No, well, Mr. Malana, if you can. I don't know if you'd like to just uh, answer Ms. Fraga. If you don't want to just answer that specific question, then perhaps we could ask the Commission what they think of that, uh, and then you could conclude with the, all of the responses. Uh, Commission, go ahead. Well, thank you very much. No, our communication refers to is more wide than uh, just uh, the uh, fishery strategy. But of course, it includes a large part that is, as I said, is uh, concerned with the fisheries, uh, with uh, fisheries issues. And this is one of the four pillars I mentioned before. So there is indeed something that could be part of this more global and more wider uh, maritime strategy. Uh, Concerning fisheries, uh, there is, of course, uh, uh, the work that is being developed also in the context of the uh, General Commission for Fisheries uh, in the Mediterranean, GFCM, where we are also trying to develop uh, better resource management at regional level. And in particular, we plan this year to uh, propose uh, uh, the, the, the reflection on the establishment of long-term management plans in the Adriatic, and in particular for small uh, pelagics, which is uh, one of the fisheries that is particularly important in the Adriatic Ionian region for which we could also use uh, the possibility foreseen by the Mediterranean regulation to uh, propose uh, European long-term management plans. As you know, this is a possibility provided already by the Mediterranean regulation, uh, and it's clearly an area where there is a scope for uh, a European plan in particular for small pelagics in the, in the Adriatic Union. So we can think of many things that can be developed in this context. As you know, as I said before, such a strategy is, we are in a way the, the honest broker of the strategy. So the approach is very much to ask member states and the stakeholders on the spot to come with proposals and to come with projects. So we are very happy to support on that and that's where you can be of very much help for us to stimulate this debate at local level with local stakeholders to uh, come up with ideas that would meet these priorities uh, that have been defined and for which we could pool and mobilize the funds that will be available in the new financial programming period. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Milana, would you like to make final comments? Well, I think that there's a little bit of a, a confusion here on the basis, really, on the fundamental question. My report will be just on a strategy for fishing in the Adriatic and Ionian region. But what happened from when we started off with this in own initiative report? Well, the Commission, without our knowledge, published a strategy for the sa very same region, the strategy that the Commission has just spoken of. So they're two different documents. On the other document, the Commission's document, the one that the Commission just presented, I think that what we should, as a committee, do is ask to be able to have reinforced or b bolstered cooperation with the Commission. Because a document on IMP with a big portion on fisheries is a document that only gets discussed in, in Transportation Committee. And I remember that there was a, a somewhat of a battle over this in the past, on a similar subject. But we need to be very careful about this. And in, uh, the coordinators need to work so that we can make sure that we have a specific action 
in this way because we're talking about two different documents here and I really appreciated the comments made by the Commission our initiative here in Parliament is one that seems to be coming at a very very good time considering the fact that the Commission just uh, published this other, this uh, this second document so we're kind of lucky on the timing here but as far as we're concerned my report will be a report strictly on a strategy for fishing in the Adriatic and Ionian Basin. And obviously we can't uh, act like ostriches and just hide our heads in the, in the sand. So if we, we have to look around at what the rest of the European Union is doing and, and if there are other things going on in a similar vein, we need to interact with them. So just a, a super quick comment. The the document talks about the stakeholders, about the economic development, about fishing, but there's not a single word in the document on relations with non-member states. And I tried to bring this up before. It is the importance of those non-member states is amazing in this region. We can do everything we want in the area of sustainable development. On the Italian side or in the Slovenian side, but then, if next door we have another country that is doing something to destroy the resources, well, then everything we will do, we're doing will be for naught. Because those very same countries are often uh, carrying out practices that create unfair competition. And remember, the fishing that they're doing in their countries is going to come directly to our market. So that's something that is... a uh, a major element that you have left out of your document, or that the Commission has left out of the Commission, there's there's very little mention of the third uh, third party countries. And I'll be very frank here. We cannot just leave this up to international uh, conventions. There's a there's a, a way of saying it in in Italy, that. Is that we can't we just we say that you just you can't just leave things to one sort of type of international agreement. We have to be extremely careful about how we address this. We have eight member states, and then we have fourteen non-members, and so the eight member states can do the best possible work, but yet we cannot ignore what the other countries are doing. In North Africa, for example. We do lots in the area of development cooperation, but that doesn't necessarily lead to full respect of the rules. So now to just go back to our the, the report at hand. I'm looking forward to the comments that will be made from the colleagues. I'm obviously not during the holidays, and let me take advantage of this opportunity to wish you all the happiest of holidays, and I'm sure they'll have your comments after the the holidays and I'll work closely with the shadows. I'll come up with a, a quick written draft and then taking into account the full context we can come up with some specific actions that will mean that fishing is not just a, another of the thousands of ways of using the Adriatic and the Ionian but rather a strategy that boosts production, that boosts aquaculture, but within full respect of the biological resources and with a view to sustainable use of the, the sea resources as well. Because up until now the rules don't necessarily always do all of these things. So I'm, I'm very happy to have had this chance to exchange views with the Commission this afternoon. Now we'll get to work. And I look forward to those comments and suggestions from the colleagues. If You can be assured that my door will be open to all of those comments. Thank you very much, Mr. Milana. Let's move to the next item on the agenda. That would be item 10, which is 
amendment of Council Regulation 859-980 considering the conservation of fishery resources through technical measures for the protection of juveniles of marine organisms. Today is our opportunity to uh, listen to our rep uh, the a presentation by the Commission. Our reporter is Rara Susan Nikolusku, who is not here, but the Commission has the floor. Who is taking the floor from the Commission? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. So uh, the Commission would like to present the proposal. I'll try to do it uh, shortly since uh, this is part of the general exercise of the screening of the EU Aki and uh, trying to reclassifying the, uh, the powers which Commission currently holds into delegated and implementing uh, powers. Uh, this uh, proposal uh, concerns the amendments to the Regulation 850-98 concerning the conservation of fishery resources through technical measures for the protection of uh, juveniles of marine organisms in line with the rules of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. This is a pure alignment, alignment uh, procedure. That's why uh, this amendments uh, we are having in front of us uh, today were not included uh, in the previous proposal of uh, the Commission which was also dealing with this regulation and regulation 1435 uh, just uh, to clarify. So what exactly Commission is proposing uh, in this new act? Uh, we propose to reclassify the powers uh, which, we, which currently have been delegated to the Commission into delegated and implementing acts and uh, delegated acts uh, we propose that uh, will be issued concerning uh, issues such as the division of the regions into geographical areas, the amendment of rules concerning the conditions for the use of certain mesh size combinations, uh, in relation to rules concerning technical descriptions and methods of use of authorized device that might be attached to the fishing net, uh, also conditions under which vessels which exceed 8 meters length can be permitted to use uh, beam trolls within certain waters of the Union. Uh, finally, delegated acts should, should be given to the Commission in respect of measures designed to address unexpectedly small or large recruitments of juveniles, change, changes in the migration patterns or any other changes uh, concerning the conservation status of the fishing stocks. When it comes to the implementing powers, uh, we propose that uh, the Commission will have implementing powers in respect of technical rules concerning uh, measuring mesh sizes, square mesh netting and twine thickness, uh, technical rules related to the construction of knitting materials uh, in relation to listing of devices that might obstruct or otherwise diminish the effective mesh opening in a fishing net, uh, transmission of lists of vessels to which a special fishing permit to use beam trolls has been issued, technical rules related to measuring engine powers and gear dimension, and finally in relation to temporary measures where the conservation of stocks calls for immediate action. So uh, we hope that this is pretty straightforward and uh, even if, if slightly technical exercise and uh, that Parliament uh, will help us to close the discussions on this uh, proposal quite quickly. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Thomas, would you like to take the floor? Mrs. Thomas. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais... <coughs> thank you, Chair. I should like to thank the Commission for giving these elements of clarification in terms of delegated acts and implementing acts. In recital four, it is stated that the commission will consult for the purposes of preparatory work for delegated acts. This recital means, if I'm not mistaken, 
that the council will be reassured in terms of the commission's use of delegated acts and with a view to getting out of an impasse, an institutional impasse, the one that we find ourselves in. So just a question on Article 47, uh, 45, rather. For this article there, for emergency measures, both the commission, or rather, both implementing acts and delegated acts can be used. So I would like to know what the Commission thinks about the reality of this procedure. Are these complementary instruments or are they interchangeable? No va a hacer nadie más uso. Would anyone else like the floor? No, that's not the case. Then I'd like to give the floor to the Commission to answer that question. If I understood the question correctly, it concerns the, when the Commission is going to issue delegated acts and when implementing acts concerning the measures. So uh, delegated acts are uh, expected to, to use when we have uh, certain changes in, uh, in stock, but they are not uh, so immediate or they, they have immediate effect, but they are not uh, necessarily very immediate when we have the situation when which calls for more immediate action we here propose the uh, implementing acts i'm not sure if it satisfies uh, the MEP but uh, i'm also happy to discuss it uh, later bilaterally well thank you very much no other request for con comments then well, then, let's move on to Association of the Overseas Countries and Territories with the European Union. The rapporteur presented the report last month to the committee. So what I hope to do now was to request a little bit more information from the rapporteur before I let you know that the deadline for tabling amendments will be set on the 3rd of January at noon. So January 3rd, noon, deadline for tabling amendments. Mr. Rivellini, the floor is yours. Grazie. Thank you. Well, the 3rd of January at noon is just the day after Christmas and New Year's, so it's a little bit strange to set that date as the deadline for amendments. But whatever the case may be, I'd like to underline the fact that OCTs are in the Atlantic, the Antarctic, the Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, and the Pacific Ocean. And they, these islands constitutionally depend on four member states of the European Union, Denmark, France, the Netherlands, and the UK. The European Union has plans to revise the basic principles that give a framework to our relations with the OCTs and try to take into account the specificity of these these islands. So coastal management in OCTs uh, that have to take into account a number of different things, finding a balance between economic and social activities, aquaculture, fishing, coastal development, tourism, renewable development, and renewable, uh, uh, renewable energy, raw materials, and all the while factoring in climate change and human activity, the effects of, of those. In maritime affairs, with this new agreement, we will need a promotion of marine knowledge, biotechnology, ocean energy, maritime surveillance, and coastal zone management that is based on uh, ecosystem management. And as far as a sustainable management of fish stocks is concerned, the new agreement should be based on responsible fisheries management as well as conservation and sustainable management of fish stocks with regular consultations between the parties for the purposes of managing the uh, biological resources. And very importantly, there must be uh, information exchanges on the state of resources. 
Now, as far as fishing is concerned, the European Union must give more support to monitoring, controls, surveillance, and inspection so as to combat as best possible IUU, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. And this specifically in the uh, types of I illegal fishing trade. We also hope to support effective cooperation within the regional fisheries organizations for the purposes of specifically implementing measures to combat IUU. In fact, IUU is one of the biggest threats to the sustainability of fishing resources and in biodiversity around the oceans of the world. We also need to boost uh, EU OCT cooperation with, uh, for the purposes of uh, fighting IUU. And so to really boost this part of the proposal, I have proposed an amendment, Article 9, Paragraph 2 point B, and I hope that the colleagues will read that amendment and support me in that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rivellini. Does anybody wish to take the floor? Does the Commission wish to take the floor? No? Well, in that case, it's all clear, it seems. Everything's clear. When it comes to the deadline for amendments, Mr Rivellini, the problem is that the vote in committee is scheduled for January, so that's the 21st of January committee meeting, and because it's going to be voted upon eventually in February. So we have to have a deadline in advance of that committee meeting in order to give enough time for the amendments to be sorted. Okay, so that concludes that item on the agenda. Any other business? We haven't had anyone raise any other business under that item. Anyone wish to raise anything now under any other business? Ah, yes, Miss Fraga. So, 13, Chair's announcements concerning coordinated decisions. Miss Fraga. Microphone for the speaker, please. There is a draft programme for a hearing on deep sea species that was uh, approved at the last meeting. And it seems to me that the uh, draft programme is rather imbalanced. And uh, there are a few points I'd like to address. It seems to me that the most important point, or at least the one receiving most supporting, is a uh, deep sea fisherman. Uh, and that's something that's given only a small uh, allocation of time in the programme. It seems to me that a lot of the programme is given over to subjects of less interest. So this deep sea fisherman needs to be looked at. And there's also uh, a, a sea mapping project, a cartography project that's been entered into and funded by the European Commission. And it would be interesting to hear what's going on on that m project. I'm not going to comment on all the points that are on the programme, but I just thought it would be a good idea to have a better balance established in the programme. So this deep fisherman, which is a, such a project for the European Commission, and the Enmerita programme, uh, which is receiving community funding and which relates to funding for the whole of, uh, with, for mapping for the whole of that area should be looked at more strongly. Thank you, Ms Thomas. Yes, I just wanted to echo the words of Ms Fraga. Thank you, Ms Levin. No, I'd just like to say that this program has been known for over two weeks. Mm. It was passed through the coordinators, mm. and I think both your coordinators were aware about it, and, and it's followed all the procedures. The advisors had, had a meeting uh, and, and were uh, all um, in favor of this program, so I can't really see that we, we should change it now. I mean, we have to follow the calendar. Okay, just one question. I don't think that anyone has brought up over the course of the meetings or the proposals that the groups put forward has brought up a, a problem with this. Uh, I don't think this issue has actually been uh, brought up at all. What is at stake 
at least if I interpret correctly what Ms. Fraga has said, is that she wanted to simply extend uh, what's going to be said on two particular topics. So she just wants to go into more detail and more time for those two items. The only doubt that I have is I don't know whether we can do that, economically speaking, in terms of the the costs that will be incurred, adding new speakers on those subjects. I don't know whether that's possible. But it's not a question of adding new topics or taking topics away. It's rather extending uh, what's already allocated and trying to go into more detail. Uh, do you think it's possible? Bien. OK, yes, Ms. Levin. No, I don't think it's a correct procedure now to take such a, a, a decision here now when we're just one, two, three, four, five, six members present. When we're taking a decision in coordinators' meeting with all the coordinators present, so we, why could, uh, we can't really change it procedurally now. Yeah, no, so I use. Okay, well, there's just one point. The decision taken at the coordinators' meeting was taken here. Uh, in the presence, actually, of the members of the committee. Uh, so it's really a question of the fact that we only have six members here in a full committee meeting, and once again, this is an absolute disgrace. I've said this before. This was actually something I brought up at the coordinators meeting. But the decisions taken by the coordinators decision uh, meeting are then taken to the committee to discuss, but it is the committee itself that has to discuss these matters and take a final decision. Uh, the fact that the coordinators have taken a stance on it doesn't mean the committee is therefore not able to amend it or to change it. So we can certainly put it to a vote if you prefer, but with uh, not many people here. I think if there are no technical problems, which it doesn't seem that there are, there's no problem in adding to the programme and increasing it by two extra speakers. Uh, yes, go ahead. Sorry, Chairman. It's not that I disagree. I was just reading a document and I didn't have a chance to jump in straight away. There has been a proposal to increase the scope and to add two more speakers. And is that what you want to vote on now? OK, just wanted to get that clear. OK. So it's not changing any of the speakers that are already on the programme, it's just adding two more. Who agrees with that proposal? Against? OK. Abstentions? Well, in that case, the proposal is carried. And we will now make a, a move to increase the uh, scope with two extra speakers. Microphone for the speaker, please. Any other questions uh, regarding the coordinator's decisions? No? OK. Is that OK? All clear? OK, no other matters then. The next meeting will be on the 21st of January and the 22nd of January. And with no further business to deal with, have a very happy Christmas. Christmas. Uh, take the opportunity to relax and to come back with batteries recharged in the new year. Thank you. Cuando digo todos, and when I say all of you, of course, the chairman kindly includes the interpreters. Thank you.